In the second part of solving systems using tables and graphs, we're going to talk about using the graphing calculator to help us out. Now, we had talked about how to use a table to solve a system of equations. If you graph things in the graphing calculator and you go to the table function, the solution to the system is the ordered pair where both equations have the same y value at a certain x value. So, in problem two, the Greenland shark has a growth rate of 0.75 centimeters a year, and its birth length is generally around 37 centimeters. The spiny dogfish shark has a growth rate of 1.5 centimeters per year, and its birth length is about 22 centimeters we want to determine when these sharks will be the same length. Well, first of all, I need equations. And the equations for these are going to be pretty easy. The Greenland shark, its rate of growth is 0.75. A growth rate is the same as saying your slope. So 0.75x plus the 37 centimeters that it started at. So the second shark, the spiny dogfish shark, its growth rate is 1.5 centimeters per year. So that's my slope, plus the 22 centimeters that the growth rate starts at. The best way to deal with this problem, because the slopes are decimals, is to use our graphing calculator. So in the graphing calculator, you're going to plug this into y1 equals and this into y2 equals. When you graph these, though, you're not going to see the graph on the screen. You may see a little snippet of one of the graphs, but you won't see the other one. And because of that, if you try to use the intersect function, the graphing calculator will give you an error message. It doesn't mean that there's not a point of intersection. There is. It's just that the graphing calculator is a little picky. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is the window function. So if you press window at the top of your graphing calculator, you'll see the default window settings. The x minimum is negative 10. The x maximum is positive 10. The y minimum is negative 10. And the y maximum is positive 10. Don't worry about any of the other numbers in the window function, just those. Well, remember that the x-axis is going to be the years. How do I know it's years? Because the slope is the growth rate per year. And then y is going to represent the length of the shark after x years. So right now, the graphing calculator is only graphing to 10 years. So maybe it takes longer than 10 years before the two equations meet each other. So one of the things you can do is if you go to the table function, follow the x values as they get bigger than 10 and watch the y values to see if you can find where the two are equal. Well, if you watch them, you start to notice them getting closer and closer together. And finally, when you hit x is 20, you'll find out that both the y values are the same. So what this says is that in 20 years, both the sharks will be at length 52 centimeters. If you want to use the intersect function on the calculator, then in the window function, I would change the x maximum to be something bigger than 10. You know, maybe try 30. So if you change it to 30, then you go to the graph, if I can spell graph, and then you go to second trace number 5, and then hit enter three times, it should actually tell you the point of intersection. But it wouldn't tell me the point of intersection until I change the x maximum value. 
In problem three, the table shows the populations in New York City and Detroit for certain years between 1950 and 2000. Assuming these linear trends continue, when will the populations of these regions be equal? What will that population be? Okay, what I want you to notice is we have a table of data. And we learned how to find the equation for a table of data back in the last unit. It's called finding a linear regression equation, or a line of best fit. The way that I'm going to do it is a little bit different from the way the book did it because I think that you, you need to know more about how to manipulate things on the calculator before I do it the way the book does it. So I'm going to do it in a way that should be a little bit simpler. Let's start by finding an equation for the line representing the change in population in New York City. We found out that we never want to use years. The reason we don't want to plug years into the calculator is because then it'll assume that your starting population is at year zero. Well, we don't know if anybody was even living in the region of New York City in year zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to call 1950 year zero. That means the next one must be year 10, year 20, year 30, year 40, and year 50. Remember, you can't call this zero, one, two, three, four, five because 1960 is 10 years since 1950. So in your graphing calculator, put these numbers into list one under stat, and put these into list two. Don't worry that when you type them in, it changes the numbers to be in scientific notation. The calculator will know what numbers you actually typed in. Once you get those numbers typed in, you quit and you go back to stat, but this time you go to calc number four and it depends on whether you have the new operating system or the old operating system. If you have the new operating system you get something that says X list and Y list, frequency list, stored regression equation and calculate. Just keep hitting enter until you get to calculate and then it should give you the equation Y equals 146758.3371x plus 12874130.9. And this equation is pretty strong because r is 0.96. And we said the closer that r is to 1, the stronger the equation is. In order to find the second equation, we're going to use the years, same years, but this time we're going to put these numbers into list two. This is the most direct way to do it. So after you write down your equation, now go back into stat and you can clear list two by putting the cursor on L2, hit delete, and press dash, or not delete, don't press delete, I just pressed delete and I messed it up press clear and then down. And now I'm going to do that so I don't mess this up. If you accidentally hit delete, if you go back to stat, number five is called setup editor. So go to number five and hit enter twice. It'll make list two come back. So now plug these numbers into list two, but keep list one the same. For this equation, I get y is equal to 251030.4629x plus 3815142.429. And again, r is very close to 1. It's 0.98, so it must be a good equation. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these two equations, and I'm going to plug them in for y1 equals and y2 equals in order to find the point of intersection you're not going to see the graph of this on your calculator screen because these numbers are really, really huge. So after you put them into y1 equals and y2 equals, go back to the window. Now, since x represents the years in multiples of 10, you need to change your x min and x max. You can't have negative years. 
So I might start with my x min being 0. And I'm going to make my x maximum 100, because it could take up to about 100 years. I don't know. So I'm going to change that from 0 to 100. For my y min and max, your minimum or your y values are your population, and your population can't be negative. So I'm going to start my y minimum at 0. But for my y maximum, I need to pick something a lot larger than these y-intercepts. And if you're not sure what these y-intercepts are, one of the y-intercepts is just above, it's about 4 million. But the other one's about 13 million. So maybe I'll make my y-maximum 50 million, just to try something that's much larger. So 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then I'm going to hit graph and see if I can see the uh, graph on my screen. And if I can, great. And if I can't, I'll keep trying another number. But when I hit graph, it showed up on my screen. Once that happens, in order to find the point of intersection, you just do second, trace, number five, enter three times, second trace five, enter, enter, enter. And it's going to tell me that in about 87 years, the populations will be equivalently equal, 2562451. So the populations in about 87 years will be at about 25,624,251. So when is 87 years later? Well, we want 87 years after 1950. Well, 87 years later should be about 2000. 37. So now that you've changed the window on your calculator, if you need to change the window back so that you can see um, what, you know, if you're doing another graph, you need to be able to see the graph. You can fix the window real fast by just doing zoom and number six. And that will reset the default window settings on your calculator. So feel free to change these numbers whenever you feel like it. Just remember, you need to hit Zoom 6 to get back to the default window settings.